Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com weekend update show. I want to uh, welcome all our good folks who join us here uh, on a weekly basis uh, for uh, off the YouTube platform, Twitter, and our friends uh, over uh, at StockTwits. Uh, what's cool about these weekend updates, uh, at least, you know, I get back, I've been doing this for years now, um, it, it's a really good uh, it's kind of a really good roadmap uh, every single week, even if you're not in the live webinar or on our, one of our live feeds. Um, what's great about it is you can really take what we say every single week and just kind of just play it out, you know, play it out on a week to week basis. And, you know, it's not about headline news or what the macro picture of the global world economy is like. We, we try to tackle everything from a trader's point of view. So last week, if you guys remember, if you guys remember uh, last week's video, I didn't dwell on the whole week. I dwelled on the day that I traded like a complete amateur, right? There was one day last Thursday, uh, it really showed you, we talked about this, the mortality trade, how close you are every single time. If you don't bring your A game, how quickly the market can not only humble you, it could really do a lot of damage to your account. So we, we try, every single week to speak from the trader's point of view. Again, I, I say this every single week. Again, if you want to look at the whole you know, week in review macro-wise, again, there's 30,000 financial sites, yada, yada, yada. The China trade is still on. The risk trade is still on. Bulls continue uh, to bite the bears in the behind. Every dip gets bought. There is no fear. And they continue continuously try to drag uh, the bulls into uh, into the abyss. And the moral of the story is, I think when you're a new trader, you're not worried about what the implications a year from now on the China trade is. Uh, you're not worried about, you know, whether a caterpillar is going to come out with a rebound quarter, whatever the case may be. You're worried about is how am I going to make it to the next day? And the problem with the whole social media phenomenon, and I've been saying this for years, there's so much bad information out there. There's a lot of good information, but there's so much bad information out there that can dangle a carrot in front of you and sensationalize what exactly this trading business is not. Okay. And I tweeted something out, I think it was on Friday night. Okay. That basically said it took me like, and it's going to be 20 years for me in May. Okay. I tweeted something to the extent of it took me about 10 to 12 years to really get comfortable with the idea of losing money. Okay. It really took me that long. And I think the majority of people, especially new traders out there will really feel that because I, I, I don't care what process you trade. Like I trade pivots, right? That's my thing. Um, I could give you 30 pivots in a row, right? One after another, after another. And depending on your level of comfort, depending on your account size, uh, lifestyle, all that other stuff that makes you who you are individually, you're either going to succeed or fail, right? So I could do incredibly well with pivots. You can do incredibly well with options. Maybe options don't work for me. Maybe pivots don't work for you. Maybe small caps work for you. They don't work for me anymore. So there's no perfect way of trading. But the common denominator for every single trader is Every single trader has gone through the same thing. So when you're looking at a trader who's been trading 10, 15, 20, 25 years, okay, and you're looking at yourself, what you're looking at yourself is almost a futuristic view of what you could be. The problem is how do you extend your shelf life? How do you put yourself in a position that you make it to the next day? Again, I, I say this to every single trade. I don't care what you trade. Your only job, especially the first two, three years, is making it to the next day. Again, whatever the market can do to you, okay, you can't, it's impossible to really establish a mental kind of mental foundation that you can put yourself in a situation to succeed if you don't go through everything. And so many traders are sitting there and they're trying to give themselves a deadline. 
and saying to yourself, well, I have to succeed my first year or it's a failure. I have to succeed my second year. It's a failure. There, there is no timeline, guys. You guys are putting yourself uh, in an incredible situation that you're mentally so absorbed and it's so engulfed in this business that the timeline the, the, you know, that you set to yourself is not realistic. Every single trader develops completely different. There's certain traders that could develop in a year, two years. There's certain traders that could develop in 20 years. Like for example, I'm a dumb guy, right? I consider myself, and I said this, the king of the idiots, okay? So I'm a little slower, okay? I have to read something 10, 20 times to really let it sink in. It took me 10 to 12 years to figure out, well, you know, not every single day is going to be my day. Not every single trade is going to be my trade. I'm not going to be able to win when I want to win. I'm not going to be able to trade when I want to trade. The market is open, yes, but am I getting value within those intervals? So it's impossible for a new trader to put themselves in a situation that every single day you have to make money. I need to make money. If I don't make money, I'm a failure. I have a dark cloud over me. Why can't I get this today? Everybody wants instant gratification. But what social media doesn't tell you is the psychological part about this business is so specific that when your time to blossom, that's going to be your time. Not because you need to make money tomorrow to pay your mortgage bill or your, or, or your, uh, or your telephone bill. You're going to develop when you're going to develop. So for anybody to sensationalize that you can be this phenomenal trader within a month, two months, a year is ridiculous. Okay, you've never gone through every single market cycle. You could be going through a bull micro uh, market. Have you gone through a bear market? Have you gone through a distribution market? Have you gone through a market that has so much contraction that no matter what you're trading, you will never be able to make money? Have you gone through a terroristic market? Right? Have you gone through a recession? Have you gone through a, a, a mortgage crisis? Are you putting yourself in a position? That you're trading for your value interval, not because of what's happening in the outside world. And if you haven't been trading for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, how can you possibly put yourself in the shoes, mental shoes of a person who has? And I, I find it just, it's, it's such a slap in the face for everybody who's been trading for a decade, two decades, for somebody to come out that's trading for two years and saying, well, I did everything. I accomplished everything. You guys don't know anything. Okay. You guys don't know anything. It's all, you know, it's all peaches and cream and day at the beach. And the problem is so many new traders are in their early twenties, right? Most new traders are not in their thirties, forties, and fifties. Most new traders are in the twenties. So they're getting their guidelines. They're getting their information from other 20 somethings who figure that they found the Holy grail in the first, you know, 16, 20 months of their trading. And the most important part is they're starting to put all this unnecessary pressure on other new traders that they believe that they don't make it within the first 12 to 24 months, they're a failure. The one thing I will tell you guys is if you are trading, and I don't care what you're trading, if you're trading without a process, okay, I don't care what that process is, I don't care what you're trading. If you're not trading with a process that at least can put you in the direction to have your physical, right? To have your physical implementation of that process catching up to your mental, you will never make it, okay? Because again, you are setting such high standards for a goal that you can't possibly reach because it's unattainable. You can't attain it because you haven't been trading long enough. It's all screen time, okay? You can't have the same results as a trader that's been trading 20 years in the same trade if you're trading for two weeks, it's impossible, okay? There's nothing you can do to put yourself in the shoes of a person who's been trading a long time because again, you have not attained the screen time. And the one, thing, one great piece of advice that I'm gonna tell every single new trader is your job, okay, your absolute job for the first you know, year, year and a half, two years, is just to watch the screens. Even if you're not trading, even if you're not as heavily uh, capitalize as you want to be. What you want to do is just keep on looking at the screen, recording your you know level twos, recording your trades, just to kind of play it back, to kind of see off hours where you went wrong. Is there a reload buyer in your trade you're not seeing, right? You know, if you are you seeing? Is there a reload seller in your, in your trade if you're long that you're not seeing? Sometimes because you're so new and you don't have the necessary screen time to kind of answer those questions in real time, you really need to sometimes take a step back, review, review your trades, record your trades, and kind of see what you might be missing 
off hours. Again, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, never claim to be. Uh, again, king of the idiots, I am. That is my self-proclaimed title. And so it does take me slower. So I know there's a lot of traders just like me that you're going to need years and years and years in the game just to kind of figure things out. So don't put pressure on yourself, guys. You're not, you know, there's nothing that you're going through that any other trader is not going through. But the problem is it's the social media world. Nobody's ever going to put it out there and say, well, there's something must be wrong with you. You know, I got this in, you know, I got this in three weeks. I'm, you know, I'm driving a Maserati in four weeks. I'm what's, what's your deal? Why, why can't you do it? So realistically, you know, just take a step back, develop at your own speed. Okay. There's a million different styles of trading. See what fits you. You, you know, again, pivots are good for me. Are they good for you? If you have a $2,000 account, can you trade pivots? Probably not. Okay. My job, you know, my job is to put myself in a situation where I'm going to thrive. Okay. Your comfortability level, your lifestyle, your financial cycle, your whole lifestyle is completely different than mine. So how can you possibly expect to duplicate another trader? There's, there's no way rationally you can think so. So again, if you, if you want to chase some stock up 400% of the day, if that's your comfortability, that's your comfortability. Would that be my best advice to a new trader? Probably not. Okay. But again, I don't live your life, right? I don't live your life. I don't have your bills. I don't have your expectations. I don't have your, 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 your outside, you know, outside issues. So whatever you're trading, just understand it's not going to come right away. It will come if you have the necessary screen time, which again, your job is to extend your shelf life. So take a step back, breathe. It's not that serious. Turn off social media for the people who are telling you you can get this within a year. You can't. Okay. You can't. Okay. I'm telling you right now, you're going to need at least, uh, in, in a, at least, at least from the people that I've, I've traded with for years, it's going to, you're going to need at least five years. Okay. You're going to need at least five years to get comfortable. Okay. In your own skin. Uh, it's going to take you probably, and, and again, I said this and I, I think it's true. You know, I think it's going to take you at least 10 years uh, to really be comfortable with the idea of losing, just understanding that losing is part of the business, that it's a cost of doing business, okay? And you'll have your bad days, right? You're gonna go on these big runs, you're gonna go on bad runs, you're gonna go on irrelevant, you know, irrelevant days, it's gonna completely burn your mental equity and not get you. This is everything you signed up for, okay? Once you opened up your, your first brokerage account, this is everything you signed up for. So how can you expect how can you possibly put yourself in a position to think that you can solve everything within the first two years if you haven't faced everything, right? You haven't faced all the adversity. You haven't faced uh, every single um, every single part of the market that the market has to give you. So don't put pressure on yourself. There's absolutely no point to put pressure on yourself. Get as much screen time as possible. Take a step back. Read as many books as, as possibly can. Again, people, for some reason, uh, even though, even though for me, for me, screen time is everything. A lot of people like to read. Okay. And a lot of people, for some reason, bash the idea of reading. If that is your thing and, and you can, uh, and you can really embrace words on a page that makes sense to you for the you know, possibly outcome, do so. Okay. Educate yourself, do whatever it takes possible to put yourself in a better position where you were yesterday. So if that means audio books, if that means books, if that means financial sites, and that means attending uh, webinars, workshops, whatever the case may be, put yourself in a position that you're still trading tomorrow. Again, don't put yourself in a lot of pressure. Whatever you're going through, every single trader has. And the most important thing is you can, you will, you just need a little bit more time sometimes than the person sitting next to you. So let's talk about the markets. Fundamentally, nothing has changed, right? Nothing has changed. Bulls are still in control. Uh, they're building on important supply zones. And you can see here, you know, this is the first close uh, this is the first close since October over supply. We're holding the supply zones. We're building over the supply zones, and the bears are starting to lose faith. It's just, it's just no, you know, it, that's just the reality. Bears are losing faith. Uh, every dip is being bought. Uh, the China headline has been here for a year and a half, so you can't even uh, turn around and say, "Well, the market's frothy." No, 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 none of that exists. Price action is price action. The scoreboard is a scoreboard. The last price is fair value. And again, I promise you, there is no boogeyman. There is no algorithms that are holding up the market. There is no, you know, it, there's buyers and sellers. Okay. There's no market makers that are manipulating anything. There's buyers and sellers. When, when there's more buyers than sellers, the stock will go higher. When there's more sellers than buyers, the market, the stock goes lower. So again, these are all financial myths that the 20 year olds are running with. And for some reason it's getting passed on for generation to generation. Okay. Um,
the market continues to be good until it's not. And what I mean by that is technical levels where they close. Again, I've been saying this for years. I've been saying this from numerous videos. You know, technical analysis, there, there's no room for interpretation. I said this last week, right? When there is an area of concentration and you're wrong, it's not because there's a market maker who screwed you, okay? You misread the trade. You misread the technical analysis. So if you look at where we are just from a macro point of view, it's pretty simplistic in view, okay? From the bear case, you saw this early dip. Uh, you saw this early dip on Thursday into the 10-day rising moving average. That is 170.71 on the QQQs. You know this is the term. Again, there is no room for interpretation, okay? Once the bears seize control of this area here, right, on a closing basis, that's when you finally start seeing the back test. Until that happens, expect the dip to get bull, okay? I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm a, I'm a realist, okay? I'm an opportunist. I go where the sentiment is, I go where the money flow is. So how can you possibly be bearish seeing visual evidence that you're wrong? Just a fair question. I know a lot of people say, well, this market's too frothy. I want to be shorting every, every time the market goes up. Well, how you, again, how are you possibly doing in the last six, seven weeks? Just as, It's a very, very fair question. So don't fight the tape. It's technical analysis in its purest form. The downside going into this week is 170, right? 170, 70 on a closing basis. Again, if you believe that the 10-day moving average is the birth of the trade, well, then you have to turn around and believe that the birth of the trade to the downside is still valid as well. To the upside, again, building over uh, Wednesday's high was uh, 173. If the market gets really, really extended or the word parabolic, uh, can it get to this 175 area in the upper Bollinger Band? Absolutely. Again, again, stocks trade from supply to supply. So if we start building off this 173 level, why can't we get to this 175 level? So again, just a quick macro view. Every single day will be different. Every single day will have tier value, okay? Uh, whether, I don't care what you're trading, every single day will, will not spotlight your specific process. It just won't. The market continues to, um, continues to have different themes. And when beta rests, that's a problem for me, not, be, not financially, but, but you know, because the, the, the ranges will start to contract. When beta, when beta starts expanding, well, usually good things happen. So don't get frustrated, okay? You don't need to trade every single day. You don't need to trade every single second. Just because the market is open doesn't mean you should be putting your feet to the fire. Only when you are holding premium hands, uh, jacks, queens, kings, or obviously aces, and make sure, again, don't overthink. Wait for confirmation and let things happen. Uh, all indexes across the board, up about half of a percent either way. Again, that's not really moving the needle. Sentiment is understandable which way it's going. And I think the most important part is going into this week, we have to continuously look for clues. What I, what I do is I don't believe in the whole uh, trading with rose-colored glasses that the market will 100% start building all this level and move up. Start looking for clues. In the last week or so, like for example, like Amazon, I've been watching Amazon for three, four days, waiting for Amazon to break out, waiting for Amazon to break out. Every single time it gets into supply, it fails, right? So something is happening there. And again, I'm just using Amazon as a guinea pig, but in my antennas, they, you know, they're going up. And I'm saying to myself, well, if Amazon can't rally and this is such a big move in the indexes, well, the stock should go down. Well, not necessarily. Maybe there's this hidden seller, right? Maybe there's a size seller that they've been trying to clean up for the last three, four days. So don't try to overthink things, okay? Uh, but going into this week, I do believe you have to stay bullish until the market tells you otherwise, until there's a buyer strikes, especially in speculation capital, your Netflixes of the world, uh, your Amazons, your, your Roku's, your Baba, when they stop going up, that's when there's a potential, right? There's a, that's when there's a potential blow off top, the fear of missing out crowd will get tested at the top of the level. And that's when you start seeing very, very aggressive sell-offs. Until that happens, you can't put the cart in front of the horse, go where the wind goes, okay? Use it to your advantage and plan your game plan accordingly uh, to your risk-defined uh, process. So uh, Fridays, again, Fridays traditionally have been just very, very aggressive. The mornings have been really, really aggressive. Uh, the option sweeps, man, I've been, we've been using now the option sweeps for like two weeks to kind of play around with our core pivots. And they've just been really, really good, man. Like really, really, I've been trying to tweet uh, some of these, uh, you know, really aggressive uh, option sweeps uh, recently, okay? Like, for example, there was a tweet that I put out. I think it was on, 
I think it was on EA. Uh, I'll show you the pivots here in a second. But there was a, a pivot here. Not that it wasn't even a pivot. It was more of well, there was a big size call by an AMRN that ran up a dollar uh, that we had in the live webinar. But there was uh, one here. It is. It was right here. EA, just to give an example for all you guys who don't trade uh, with option sweeps, it's actually pretty damn good. Uh, like EA came in, somebody put in a bet of $3.3 million on the June 105 calls. And that's when the stock was like 93 and a quarter and it just exploded and really, really ran up, ran up about $3. So uh, this option flow, I'm not an options trader, but this option flow thing is pretty damn good. And we've been really uh, doing well with this thing. We saw a really big bet, exaggerated bet, especially out of the money uh, that we can uh, take advantage on. So uh, let's talk about some pivots, right? Uh, very, very aggressive in the morning. Um, really aggressive in the morning. So, uh, you know, these are the pivots I put into, obviously, the live webinar, uh, but into our private Twitter feed and the stock to its feed. Again, again, I say this every single time. We don't cherry pick these things. These are the pivots, right? These are the pivots and these are the pivots uh, that did very, very well. So Roku uh, had earnings uh, pre-market, uh, you know, really needs to establish the 55.50 pivot to go. And you can see Roku, just, just absolutely a monster move. Um, really, really monster move here. So here was the 55, right? Here was the 555, 55.50 uh, pivot. Uh, the high here was 55.30. It just needed to reclaim the supply zone. Just an absolute monster of a move. Um, Let's see what was the next one. And Microsoft, right? Microsoft broke out the day before. Uh, Pre-market high is 110. If it can reclaim, it can go. Uh, again, this is what we were looking at here. Here is the, the pre-market high of Microsoft right over here at 110. And once it reclaimed, again, stock went to, and I, I think I tweeted it out, it should have went to 1120. Look at the high of the day, right? Look at the high of the day here, uh, 1119. Again, these supply zones are pretty specific in nature. Uh, and there's a very, very good chance they will stop at those levels. And, and again, if you watch the PS60 workshop, it's basically what I've been talking about, emotional buyers uh, meeting technical sellers. doesn't mean the stock will go lower macro-wise. It just means there should be a pregnant pause uh, at those levels. So Microsoft, uh, big, big move there. Wayfair, I didn't trade. I didn't even, I stopped paying attention to it after I put it in. Don't ask me why. This thing went from 39 and a quarter. If you guys took it, I, I missed this trade, but 39 to a quarter, it, it just went absolutely. I mean, here was 39 and a quarter right here. 39 and a quarter. It just went absolutely nuts to like 57. Just absolutely sick move if you caught it. Great job. I totally forgot about this thing. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, NVIDIA, again, 5580 uh, to the upside, 155 to the downside. Both need to build. Again, these pivots have no bias, okay? There are no bias to these pivots. They're either confirming to the upside or they're confirming to the downside. And if you look at NVIDIA, here is why uh, the 158.50 to the upside, this sneaky candle right here, the two candles right over here, the top of this candle right here was 158.42, okay? The top of this candle here was 158.24. So I said basically 158.50, if it starts to confirm, it should go one to 160 and that's gonna be obviously the pivot going further. So again, stocks trade to supply. You guys notice it stopped perfectly on the supply zone. Again, what we just mentioned earlier, these are emotional buyers meeting technical sellers. And somebody asked me, and a lot of people actually continue to ask me, why do you have so many lines on your charts? Well, again, it's to show you where the stock should stop about 90, 95% of the time. And if you don't know that there's a supply zone there, well, you're eating this instead of putting the position for strength to be waiting, waiting uh, for it to confirm the top of the supply zone. So really, really understand why these supplies and demand zones are very, very important. Uh, then you had yeah, Microsoft doing this thing, blah, 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 blah. October calls hitting uh, right to 5980s. I tweeted out that was the high within 20 cents of the day. Uh, Microsoft, like we talked about, supply is 1120. It stopped at 1119. Again, to show you how to sample why these trades are so very important to understand where these things are important. So uh, cyber was good. Uh, cyber was good. I caught a, caught a quick trade in cyber. Uh, this wasn't really you know anything brain surgery involved. This is just a daily you know daily pivot. So uh, forgive me, my, for some reason my daily chart uh, my daily chart's not working. So 65 was just um, uh, 105 was just the high of uh, the cyber move on earnings, and once it reclaimed. Uh, you know, had a nice move here, almost a, almost a two dollar move on uh, cyber. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, yeah, basically, these are the pivots from the morning. 
EA, uh, again, congratulations to all you guys who caught that EA trade. And I think, oh, v, VYGR, uh, VYGR, I know some of you guys caught this in the webinar. Uh, VYGR, if it reclaimed that 13 area, it ran up to like 1340. Not something like core I, I would personally would trade, but again, not every, you know, not every trade is right for everybody. So again, this might not be for me, but this might be for you. And, you know, trade worth like 40 cents or so. Um, Amazon, uh, Amazon, I took, uh, I took it, uh, I took up, it's gonna sound funny. Uh, I took it right before the pivot because I knew I had to leave. I had, I, I was driving out of town and there was a bet, $1.1 million bet on the March, uh, 1630 calls. And I wrote here needs to build over 35, 36 keeps on getting rejected, right? Keeps on getting rejected, uh, off that 35 level. So I bought it at 34 and I gave it a couple of minutes before I had to leave and I lost a dollar in the trade, which is basically a cup of coffee. Uh, but again, this continues to be the big level, the sneaky level on Amazon that you really, really want to watch uh, for this week, 1635, 1636 build. If it does, it could really, really uh, wake up. And I think that was it. I think that was it. And that's when I left. Uh, that's when I left for uh, Maryland. So aggressive action. I mean, very, very solid week uh, from last week. I learned, you know, very, very big lesson. If you guys remember from last week's video, uh, all I kept on dwelling was that Thursday that I traded like a complete amateur. I, I, I forecast the trades. Um, I was. I felt my emotional levels really, really rising. And last Thursday turned out to be just a crappy day for me. Uh, but I learned my lesson. I learned my lesson of how if you, it's so important to bring your A game every single day and be so mentally sharp because what happened is, um, you know, I put it aside very, very quickly. I forgot about it. And this week was very, very seamless. Uh, very good week. Uh, solid action. I was very, very proud of myself for just being focused and not, you know, doing anything self uh, you know, just just uh, putting myself in a situation I was going to shoot myself in the foot. So it was very, very uh, important to me. So let me give you guys some pivots. Uh, some daily pivots that I like. Uh, all the beta stuff we'll discuss, obviously, uh, in the live webinar. But let me give you guys some uh, daily pivots. Um, some reason my um, some reason my my charts are not working here on the daily side on e signal. You know, I kind of like this JD. Okay, uh, I like this JD. Uh, if it starts building over twenty six, you get some nice move. You know, nice rising channel. Uh, if you can see how it's hovering on this five minute rising moving average. If it could just reclaim that. 26 area in build, it could be pretty good. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Um, hang out. Let me just uh, let me see what else I like here. Um, I kind of like this Milli, this M I uh, M E L I. I'm just trying to look at my watch list for tomorrow. Um, I kind of like this Milli. It's you know trades a little bit thinner. Okay, it does trade a little bit thinner than the average uh, average beta name. But if it can start reclaiming like this. 375 level, right? Because you can see here that the high right here is 375. The high here is uh, 375, uh, 37457. If it can just start reclaiming, uh, if it can start reclaiming the 375 level, I think the stock can go. So keep an eye on that. Um, I like, you know, I, I like this, I, I like this uh, Garmin. Okay, Garmin had a really, really big move on earnings. It's just really, really tight. I, I think if you, and it continues to get. If they could just reclaim this upper channel and just start building over 94, I think that goes. Um, one more China name that looks pretty good is this BZUN. Um, that looks pretty good as well. I, I think if they could start reclaiming uh, this 37, there's continued momentum in the China names. Um, I think you can get a second run on there. Uh, obviously, I will be watching uh, Amazon. I will be watching Netflix, definitely Amazon. I'm very, very interested to see if it could finally get above that sneaky channel. So uh, I like the way Netflix is setting up. I like the way Amazon is setting up. Um, you know, I, I did I did okay with Tesla this week. Um, I did okay with Tesla this week. Um, I still think, and, and again, I still think this bottom channel, uh, I still think this bottom channel has to be violated. If it does, there's gonna be a big problem. As you can see here, every single time it, it jumps up, it gets rejected. Uh, off a of supply zone. So I'm very, very curious to see that. So my message to you guys, uh, especially new traders, again, all you, you know, established traders have been doing this for a very, very long time. You could feel what I'm saying. Okay. If, if Again, if you don't wake up uh, every single day and you have some sort of disgust from the previous day, you're not human, you're not normal. Okay. Um, and 
you know, you really are doing something else than every single veteran trader is doing. For all you guys who are new and excited and aspiring traders, number one, again, if you want to do this, you'll find a way. Okay. If you want to do this, you, you'll definitely find a way. I always encourage people to, again, go get it. Okay. Nobody's going to give it to you. Go get it. Okay. But in the meantime, don't put any pressure on yourself. Okay. Again, don't fall for the dangling carrot on social media that if everything is, you're going to solve all the trading's problems within the first three months. You're going to do all this. You're going to do all that. Forget about all this stuff. Take your time. Let it come to you. You will have that aha moment. The most important part is wait for it to come organically. Guys, stay blessed. Love life. I love you all. And God's help. I'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a great Sunday. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.